Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. And for those of you who are new here, hi, I'm Amy and this is Thrift Adventure. Today I have a ship with me video for you. In these videos, I go day to day and I show the different items that I'm shipping out. Sometimes it'll look like the video is over, but typically there are at least two or three clips per video. So you wanna be sure to watch all the way to the end because I always have interesting and unique items and hopefully you can learn some new uh, things to keep your eyes out for when you're out thrifting. So so let's get started. The first item that sold is this gorgeous men's Ralph Lauren overcoat. And this is a wool cashmere blend. It's kind of a midi length. I think this is somewhat vintage, probably from the last, I'd say 20 years or so. It was a blue label. I mainly picked it up because of the fabric content. I am going to package that up off camera because it's just kind of bulky. It ended up selling for $60. I did have this listed for a really long time, but I think that I just had it overpriced to begin with. And um, I should have let it go sooner, but I got this offer for 60 today. I decided to accept. I had paid $10 for it. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $38. I think that's a pretty great profit and I am happy to move that out. I am seeing a lot more uh, coat sales, which is no surprise. So if you have coats that you haven't listed, uh, I would recommend getting them listed. And if you have old inventory, I would recommend uh, relisting them, taking a look at the listing and updating some keywords. Uh, I'm finding that when I actually uh, copy my own listings and look over uh, the description. There's some things that I missed on those old items and so looking at it with fresh eyes can help an item sell. The next item that sold is this Monta Montana Silversmith belt buckle and uh, I picked this up on a belt. So for something like this I will typically separate the belt from the belt buckle just because I think that <clears throat> people will buy these buckles individually. This sold pretty quickly. It sold for $35. I had paid $6 for both pieces, so that made my cost of goods only $3. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $25. You want to keep your eyes out for those Montana Silversmith buckles uh, because they have a pretty high um, or higher retail price and people will seek them out on the secondhand market. Of course, you want to use keywords like uh, cowboy, western. Sometimes I put, I'll put... A Yellowstone in my description. Did I say my profit was $25? That is a nice little uh, quick flip. The next item is a just a gap leather belt with a nice brass buckle. You can see it did have some tarnish and patina, but I don't mind that. People will still uh, buy belts and items even if they have distressing. This ended up selling for $28. I paid two. So after my cost of goods and fees, that made my profit $18.38. I think this might have had discounted shipping on it. I don't always write that down for my videos, but I do deduct it from my total profit that I tell you. If you haven't watched my videos before, you'll see that I love selling belts. I sell them all the time. You should consider picking them up. They are a great, great bread and butter item. Okay, the next item that sold is this pair of Blondo brand, uh, kind of moto biker style boots. I picked these up primarily for, sorry, these got a little dusty on them and I didn't notice that. Primarily because of the style. 
Also, uh, the quality seemed pretty nice. Uh, and Blondo is B-L-O-N-D-O. It looks like they have a, um, or it has a moderately high retail value. And these ended up selling for $58. So I think that is pretty great. I wasn't familiar with the brand at the time that I purchased these. <clears throat> it was at a kind of fundraiser, fill the bag type sale. So I only ended up paying $1.50 for these. And uh, I was just kind of shoveling things into my bag to try and get my average cost of goods down. So that's why I picked these up not really being familiar with the brand. So like I said, they sold for 58, I paid a dollar 50, so that made my profit $45. I think that is really awesome. I bought these over the summer, so they didn't sell right away. But we're coming into that season, so I'm not surprised that they sold. This coat is kind of a surprise. And like I said about that belt, uh, people will buy distressed, worn out items. So this is a vintage leather bomber jacket. As you can see, it kind of had an intentionally distressed look to begin with, but it was definitely extra worn in. And I mean, it has all this extra distressing. There is like a some staining on the bottom there, some more wear to the back. This sold for $50. Uh, I didn't buy it for the brand. I bought it purely for the style. I do pretty well with distressed leather bomber jackets. This also had kind of a musty vintage-ish smell to it. And I did put that in the listing. So when I'm selling this type of item, I'm not trying to fool anybody about the condition. I want them to know that it is distressed. And it sold somewhat quick, quickly, I think about two months, so not too bad. Also, I only paid a dollar for this at a sale. And this is kind of funny, so it was another dealer doing the sale and she advertised a everything's a dollar sale so of course i was going to go check it out and i picked up three or four things another t-shirt that i think ended up selling for 50. and when i was checking out uh, i had talked to her before and we were both talking about how we needed to kind of downsize and clean stuff out. And I said, oh, I bet it feels good to get rid of some, you know, to downsize and get rid of some inventory. And she said, oh, this isn't my stuff. I wouldn't sell stuff like this. And it was kind of like she was almost insulted that I would think it was her stuff. And I was like, well, you should sell some of it because there's some good stuff that you're missing out on. <clears throat> Anyways, I just thought it was kind of funny that... I picked out up a couple of things and made 80 bucks or more. Okay, so it sold for 50, I paid a dollar. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $39. That's great. So keep your eyes out for those distressed items uh, that you can get for a cheap price. Or if you get an item and don't realize that it has flaws listed anyways, and just name the flaws and it will probably still sell. So the next item is this vintage kind of satin club jacket and it is a hog jacket, Harley Owners Group. Now, I kind of thought that I would get more for this initially, but uh, it ended up selling for $32. That's just fine. I paid $4 for it. <clears throat> So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $19.58. It is the 2nd of October, so it's possible that some of these vintage type items are for people's Halloween costumes. 
for some reason this doesn't really want to fit into my normal folding here. So anyways, if you have any of these unique vintage items in your death pile that you have not listed, I would get them listed because this is a good time of year to sell your unique vintage items. Most of my unique vintage I sell for people to actually wear every day, uh, but some people you know, don't wear this type of thing every day, but they will have a theme party to go to for Halloween. And so you can sell this type of thing. Okay, I was blah, blah, blahing. Did I say my profit was $19 and 58 cents? Okay, the next item that sold is this vintage Pendleton wool and kind of cotton canvas vest. You can see that it has the Aztec print on it. Really a cool piece. I love picking up Pendleton. Uh, they do have a few different brands, like off brands. This is high grade Western wear by Pendleton. And I think some of the off brands are initially a little lower priced than the uh, traditional Pendleton, but they still resell well. This sold for $55. I will pick up pretty much anything Pendleton that has like an Aztec or Navajo tribal type print to it. It is very iconic for Pendleton and uh, pretty trendy right now. I kind of feel like it's a timeless uh, print. So that is why I always pick it up. I did pay up a little bit for this. I paid $15. I was at a sale and I was trying to get the owner to kind of bundle and give me a deal on a bunch of belts. And so I decided to pick this up, but it turned out still to be a good sale. Uh, it made my profit $26.98. And did I say this sold pretty quickly? I think less than a month. So that's a great profit for a quick flip. The next item that sold is this pair of cool, cool, I always mispronounce that, uh, women's, it's K-U-H-L shorts. I picked up two pairs of these quite some time ago. Uh, because I've had good luck with this brand before, but uh, again, maybe I had them priced too high to begin with. I'm not sure, but they both took a long time to sell. I am glad to see these go. They sold for $15. I paid four. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that gave me a profit of a whopping $8. I'm not gonna complain though, because these are moving out the door. If you enjoy this type of video, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my channel, uh, give this video a thumbs up. All those things really help me out. They tell YouTube that people are enjoying my videos, uh, so it helps my channel grow and it encourages me. So that is all for today, but don't go anywhere. There will be at least one more clip uh, and hopefully I have a lot more sales. That was a pretty good weekend for me, so I am happy about that. Uh, I will see you soon. Hi again, it's Tuesday. Uh, normally I'd wait till Wednesday, but I had quite a few sales to ship out and uh, I had a buyer message me and ask me if I could ship their purchase uh, ASAP because they're getting married and they wanted to wear this stunning dress for some of their wedding festivities. It is this wrap dress by Jay Peterman. It is 100% silk and it has this beautiful kind of floral pattern. I think that you can tell um, on camera, but just the feel of this dress is luxurious and expensive feeling. I'm not really sure how much it uh, originally retailed for, but it really feels like, you know, a three, $400 dress. The buyer paid 80 for this. I'm gonna stand up. You know, I, actually I might just package this up off camera because I want to get it really nice 
uh, to send off to her. And I'm gonna add a ribbon and uh, some extra extras so that it feels special for her special day. Okay, uh, looks like I forgot to put my stuff in order here. So she paid 80. Uh, I paid seven. I actually originally bought that for myself when I first lost weight. Um, for those of you who are new here, I've mentioned it before, I've lost between 50 and 60 pounds depending on the day and uh, that was a size six and I could fit into it, but I just never wore it and it literally hung there for, I don't know, a couple of years and I decided to list it recently and I'm glad I did so she can enjoy it now. Uh, so after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $54.98. I think that is an awesome profit. Uh, makes me very happy to see it go to a new home. The next item is the semi-vintage Juicy Couture necklace. This sold quite quickly. The vintage Juicy Couture from the 90s and 2000s is pretty trendy and desirable right now. However, this only sold for $17. It did have a lot of wear on it though. Can you see all the silver is worn off and on the back? So uh, I just decided to take a quick flip and take that offer that the buyer made me. Had this been in better condition, I probably would have held out for closer to, I don't know, in the $40 to $50 range. Um, but I only paid $2 for this, so I decided to just go ahead and take that quick flip and let it go. Let's see, I am not going to put this in a box, so I'm just gonna add a little bit extra packaging. Uh, so did I say I only paid $2 for it? So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $11.60. Nothing to get real excited about, but really great for a two dollar investment and a quick flip i'm not going to complain about that at all okay sorry i'm feeling a little disorganized all of a sudden but you guys will bear with me right i sure hope so okay so the next item that sold is this vintage bolo tie it has an agate and then it has um this is BPOE for the Elks. I've talked about bolo ties before. In general, basic bolo ties don't sell for a whole lot for me. Usually in the $15 to $30 range. Now you do want to do your research when you pick up a bolo tie because some of like the Native American ones or um, ones with precious stones could... Uh, be more valuable and let's see i've kind of made a mess of this too so i'll finish packaging that that one sold for 20. Uh, i hadn't had it listed very long i only paid a dollar for it so after posh fees and my cost of goods that made my profit 15 dollars that's just fine that is in line with what i anticipated so i try and keep you know my buy-in on bolo ties under five dollars uh, but really i like to be under three dollars okay the next item that sold is this vintage columbia fleece jacket now this is the liner to a ski coat whenever i find these vintage uh, columbia pieces like this if the liner is like a vibrant color or had this had like that design on the collar i will split the coat up and when I list it I put ski you know I'll put fleece jacket but uh, then I'll also put ski coat liner boy I'm just batting a thousand here with my packaging this is not I don't think this is big enough either well I guess I'm just gonna be packaging up off camera more today but whatever Okay, but this ended up selling for $52. So when I list the liner, I put ski coat liner. And when I list the outer shell, I'll put ski coat shell. And um, so people are clear on what they're getting. 
I think a lot of people know that those vintage Columbia jackets came with liners. Um, and typically for the shell, I'll put this listing is for the shell only. I tend to make more money that way. And you know, some people just want the shell or they just want the fleece. So did I say this sold for $52? I thought that was great. I got this at a fill the bag sale where my average cost of goods was 15 cents. So uh, that made my profit $39.43. That is awesome. I think I listed that at the beginning of summer. So it did take a little while to sell, but um, that's not a surprise because it was a winter item. This I also got at that same fill the bag sale, I think on the same day. And it is this vintage polyester kind of leisure suit, 1970s jacket, shirt. I used the term leisure, leisure suit, Western, rockabilly, uh, polyester, button up. That's one thing I don't know if I've specifically talked about in my videos, but when you're listing vintage or any item for that matter, you really want to try and use as many keywords as possible. And what I do is I put the most applicable keywords in my title and then anything else that I can think might apply or that I can think that a buyer might search for I will put at the bottom of my listings and I I just write at the bottom of the description I'll just write tags <clears throat> sorry I'm still recovering from that cold um, and then I put all of those keywords in there it's it's not, I only use uh, words that are applicable. I don't spam other words or brands or anything that don't apply. And I do really think that it helps for especially vintage items. So like this shirt was from JCPenney and I didn't list it under JCPenney brand. I listed it under the vintage brand on Poshmark. And then I used all those keywords so that the buyer could find what they were, the style that they were looking for. Because typically with vintage pieces, I am purchasing more for style than for brand, unless it is a really great brand. Okay, so blah, 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 blah. I hope that's helpful. Uh, this sold for $30. This was also 15 cents at the fill the bag sale. So that made my profit $21.83. I've said this before, I like to experiment at uh, fill the bag sales. So sometimes I'll pick up items that I wouldn't normally pick up just to see how they do. Sometimes they take a little bit longer to sell, but if it's a low uh, cost of goods, then that's fine. If it doesn't work out, I can just donate it uh, and get a coupon to save money on other items. Okay, well, I hope this week continues. I've had quite a few sales. I, th I think three of those items sold as a result of my promoted listings. So I'm still overall happy with uh, the results from those promoted listings and um, I'm gonna keep it up. I did want to have a caveat to that. So it is not a cure-all, that is for sure. So I had promoted listings going on almost all of September and my sales were half of what they were last year in September. So it, it doesn't fix all of the problems for sure. Um, and I really kind of had a wake up call because I had another month earlier in the year that was half of what it was last year. And I just have kind of been slacking on my listings and it's really showing in my results and to be perfectly honest, I cannot afford to be <laughs> relaxed and lazy on my listings. So I am ready to go, you know, and really uh, put my mind and put some hard work in. So hopefully you guys will be seeing uh, some better sales. And typically fourth quarter is a little bit better for me. Uh, first quarter is usually the best, uh, but I start listing, you know, heavily in fourth quarter so that I have a lot of listings for first quarter. That's just uh, for me because of, I think the nature of the vintage items that I sell. 
Anyways, I hope that information is helpful. Don't go anywhere. I will be back real quick with more sales. Hey there, it's Thursday and I've got some more goodies to ship out. The first item that sold is this semi-vintage uh, freshwater pearl necklace and I believe these are called rice pearls. I put rice crispy. Let's see if we can get it to focus because they kind of look like little uh, rice krispies. I saw, I'm not sure about this if I sold it for too low or too high. I'm not sure, but it ended up selling for $55, which I was overall happy with because I paid uh, $3 for it. And I mean, I saw comps all over the board on this. So sometimes it is hard to know what makes a piece of jewelry or a similar piece of jewelry more valuable uh, than others or will make it sell for more. So I try and do research on uh, pieces, but there's only so much time that I am willing to uh, spend on most items. And typically freshwater pearls like this, you know, don't sell for a ton of money. So I just went, went ahead and took that $55 offer I got. Like I said, I paid three. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $41. I think that is excellent for a $3 investment. The next item that sold is this adorable little vintage cat pin. You see it's reading a book and talking on the phone. I'm trying not to pick up as many brooches because I have a whole bunch of them and they just don't sell for high dollar amounts. This sold for 17 with discounted shipping. Um, I'll, I'll take that back. Some do sell for high dollar amounts. Certain brands and styles you can get good money for, but typically most of the items that you're gonna see or brooches that you're gonna see at estate sales and thrift stores, you know, the brooches are gonna sell for between 10 and $30. I paid $3 for this. Uh, so because it had discounted shipping also, that made my profit $8.58. I just couldn't pass this little guy up though because he was so cute. And that's still $8.58, which these days is only a little bit more than a Starbucks coffee, which is really depressing how expensive everything is getting. Uh, you know, and a lot of you have said how affordable the prices are that I get in my area. And I feel really fortunate that um, our thrift stores still aren't crazy high priced. Something interesting that I wanted to ask you guys about. So I have had, or there has been three charity thrift stores in my area. So within about 45 minutes that have closed in the last about six months to a year. And I'm curious if you guys are seeing charity thrift stores close in your areas. It seems like Goodwill is going strong and they keep raising their prices. All three of these um, stores had, I felt like they overpriced their items for thrift stores. So, you know, like if you went in there, a St. John top would be $55 or, you know, they had lots of items for over $20. And I'm wondering if that contributed to why they closed because they didn't have as many sales or if there isn't as many volunteers. Let me know if you guys know, um, or if you're seeing thrift stores close in your area. Another one, uh, which was right in my town, used to be St. Vincent de Paul, and they were taken over by another organization about a year ago. And that St. Vincent de Paul had been in business since, I mean, I can remember 30 plus years. And they are going, they went out of business after this other organization took them over. Some of the prices went up, some of the prices went down. Um, but yeah, I'm just curious. I find it. I find it odd that thrift stores are, are, or charity stores are closing their doors. Okay, so I said my profit was $8.58 on that. The next item, this is a really great sale. It's gonna be hard for you to really be able to tell what it is, but it is this asymmetrical dress from Trina Turk. And 
this brand has a pretty high retail value. In fact, uh, the price on this was $248 originally. And it's just for this cotton kind of weird shift dress. I only picked it up because it was $4.99 and it was new with tags and it had that uh, high retail price on it. I also saw some decent sold comps on this and mine ended up selling for $89. I did have it listed a little higher and I think this week, in fact, I reduced the price to $89 and then it sold for full price. Uh, I am going through and trying to really look at my old listings with a uh, discerning eye uh, and see if they are items that I really want to hold out for top dollar or if they are items that I am ready to move out, you know, reduce the price and still make a profit, but move out. And I would really recommend that you do the same. So I am either reducing the prices or relisting the item. And I'm using the, uh, let me, I, I'll finish. I'm sorry, I'm kind of all over the place today. So this sold for 89, I paid five. So after posh fees, that made my profit $66.20. That is awesome. That did take a good five, six months to sell. So I am taking a look at my listings, looking at the, uh, the title, the description, making sure that I have as many applicable keywords in the description as possible, either reducing the price or I am using the copy feature on Poshmark to relist the item. So I don't know if you guys have heard, but in Canada, Poshmark has some sort of AI, I think, that is able to detect or see the people who are just relisting the same listings all the time. Apparently there's bots that you can use to do that. And so if you are doing that all the time, more than every 60 days, I think it is, that you can relist stale items and they'll show up in the new in. So if you're doing it more often than that, uh, Poshmark is not showing them in the new in or just in category. And um, but anyways, when you use the copy feature and it's been more than 60 days, then it makes your uh, listing come up as just in. And a lot of people will search for that when they are searching for items. So I think that is helpful to do that whenever you can, you know, for the items that have been uh, listed for more than 60 days. I hope that's helpful. If you guys have any tips for me, I am always open to, you know, suggestions or information because uh, I have a lot of knowledge, but I don't know it all. And I think we could all use more sales. I think a lot of us are in the same uh, boat and it's just taking, I'm having to work a lot harder than I used to, to get the same or less sales. So I completely understand for everyone who is struggling and um, kudos to all of you who are doing really well. Okay, so it is Thursday. If I have more sales, I will ship them tomorrow. My local post office is still closed and um, I'm having to go to another one that's in a nearby town. Um, there's some sort of fuel leak at my post office and uh, so the one in the nearby town isn't open on Saturdays. Anyways, just lots of stuff going on. I hope you guys are all doing well and I will see you tomorrow. Hi again, it's Friday and it's been a pretty good 24 hours. I'm pretty excited. I had um, this one pretty great bundle sale that I'll share with you. It is of two rings. And the first ring is this uh, gold bypass ring it does have two or it did have two little diamonds but one of them is missing and then this is a white gold kind of art deco style ring with a green stone and two little tiny diamonds I'm not sure what that green stone is uh, this bundle sold for $180 I had hoped to get a little bit more for these rings but I've had them listed for quite a while so when I got that offer for both, I just decided to go ahead and take it. I had paid 
$3 for the little gold bypass ring. And then I paid $40 for this white gold ring. So that still left me with plenty of room for profit. Like I said, it sold for $180. My total cost of goods was $43. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $101. I think that's really great. And this buyer did get a great deal on these rings, but I still made a nice profit and I'm not going to complain about that at all. Let's see. I think those should be fine like that. Uh, so I get these little boxes or I have gotten them at the dollar store and they come in a set of 10 for $1.25. They're near like the um, Tupperware typically and they're on end caps, but the last couple times I've been, they didn't have them. So I'm not sure if they were just out or if they are not selling them anymore, but I really love them because they're pretty affordable and um, you know, they're pretty sturdy. So I think they protect your items while they're in transit. And um, I'm hopeful that people could reuse them for something instead of just throwing them away. I have got comments from customers saying that they like the little boxes. So I think it is a great option for, you know, 12 cents or so. And I only uh, get my ribbons secondhand. I don't buy new ribbon. I just look for it at, you know, yard sales and thrift stores. Usually I pay like a quarter for it. I had another bundle here that just sold. And the first item is this cute tapestry belt. Uh, I picked this one and another cream colored one up. I had never picked up a tapestry belt like this before. And the other one uh, sold to a subscriber. I'm not sure if it's the same person who bought this or not, uh, but they turned out to be a pretty decent buy. Uh, this bundle sold for $40, and the other item was this little snowman brooch with rhinestones. So I paid, let's see, a dollar for the brooch and uh, less than a dollar for the belt because I got it at a fill the bag sale. I forgot to print my labels today, so I'm kind of looking at a piece of paper here. That's why I'm hesitating a little bit. So it sold for 40. I paid a total of $2. So after posh fees and my cost of goods that made my profit $30. I think that's really great for a $2 investment. For those of you who haven't watched my videos before, I typically just package my belts in tissue paper and, uh, I use the small flat rate box or the 1096 L box. So this is the small flat rate box and the 1096 L is just slightly larger than that. So for wider, thicker belts, I'll use that larger box. And I think they work out really great. You probably could ship belts in like the padded flat rate envelope or even a Tyvek for that matter. I'm kind of a little OCD about being worried about things getting damaged in transit. So I usually over package things possibly. Sorry, I'm struggling here with this ribbon. You know, and of course I don't need to put ribbons or stickers on things, but I really do think that it improves the buyer experience and may encourage them to come back to your closet or just, you know, make the feel of opening the package better to begin with. So another brooch sale. I've had quite a few this week and I had been talking about how brooches don't sell well. I do find that they sell better closer to the holidays. I think people give them as gifts. The next one is this cute little bee or wasp pin. It's just so tiny and delicate. That's why I picked it up and it sold for $22. I think that's pretty great for a teeny tiny little brooch like this. 
I only paid a dollar for it. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $16.60. So brooches are, you know, they're a little um, nice little bread and butter item, but they typically don't sell quickly, like I said. So it's just up to you if you want to pick up that kind of thing that takes a while to sell or not. They just kind of typically, you know, I'll sell them in bundles or, like I said, pe for people to give as gifts. Okay, and the last item sold to a subscriber. So thank you, Lana, for buying this, or maybe it's Lana, for buying this Johnny Was blouse. Isn't that just gorgeous? I showed this in one of my recent Thrift With Me thrift haul videos, and she watched the video, and then she came in and made me a very reasonable offer for $60, and I went ahead and accepted that. I'm always happy to try and give you guys good deals if you make me an offer or if you mention that you are a subscriber before you make the offer. Uh, I'll always try and give you my best price when I can. So I had paid $5 for this after posh fees and my cost of goods. Let's see, that made my profit $43 is a great profit. It sold pretty quickly too. So thank you so, so much for supporting, you know, my Poshmark business and my YouTube business. I just really appreciate your guys' kindness so much. It really means a lot to me. Okay, so that is it for this week. I forgot to total up my promoted listings results, but I'm pretty sure I had just over $100 in sales from my promoted listings. So that would come out to about $60 more in sales this week uh, than I may have had otherwise. So I, like I said, I'm gonna continue with it. My total sales for the week was $995. I think that's really great considering I didn't have any sales on Cherish and I had a lot more volume of sales on Poshmark than normal. My total cost of goods was $114.80. So after Posh fees, my cost of goods, and any shipping discounts, that made my total profit $669.16. Overall, I am happy with that uh, result considering the time of year and what sold. Um, I do have potentially a dealer coming to town next weekend uh, to look at some furniture that I have for sale. So fingers crossed that he buys stuff because I've been buying furniture, but I haven't been very good at listing it. And I really need to um, move some of that out and get the money for it. So thank you so much for watching you guys. If you're enjoying my videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. That way you'll be notified anytime I upload new videos. Also, if you could give this video a thumbs up and comment down below, everything like that really helps me out and encourages me. So I will see you next week.